trestles is like, I don't know, it's one of those ways you take off and you just look at that perfect wall and you're so, so excited. You see some of the more progressive surfing uh, that you'll see anywhere on tour. It allows you to look at things very creatively. I think you need to have some sort of an air game to win here for sure. Starting with an air, doing four or five turns, then finishing with an air. You'll need to go to the air to win this event. It makes it super exciting. Every single heat, every matchup is something to talk about and something to get excited about. So you really got to bring your A game more than ever, I think. Just one heat left to decide our final for the Hurley Pro in 2017. It's a battle in the semi-finals between John John Florence and Felipe Toledo. And it should be a big one. Both these guys have had a great mix of that time-honored approach, that respect to the rail, but also throwing down some of the biggest airs of the event so far. Felipe exploded out of some big turns in the uh, quarterfinals. John Florence, he had some moments too. But this is going to be a lot of fun to watch. Just a couple of previous head-to-head -head matchups between these two. John Florence getting the jump on Felipe a couple of times. But he's in second spot on the ratings. He's just seen Geordie Smith progress through to the final. And he doesn't want Geordie to get too far ahead here. No, he doesn't. And so he's got to match it. You know, favorite stat, average heat score. John John Florence, 16.41 which means that he has got a full point over the next competitor. Felipe's at 14.42. A lot of surfers in that 14 and a half point, whereas John John sits, you know, an excellent heat score average for this season, which is incredible. It's amazing. Yeah, generally at the end of the year, that average kind of gets down to around 14, 15. But to be up at, at that point, and we're at stop eight, yeah. and still be around 16 points is remarkable. The thing that I guess Felipe's got in his mind is he's got the best average heat score at Trestles by a long margin. Yes. Uh, a point clear of the second biggest uh, average heat score in Mick Fanning. So, you know, this is one of his strongest events, despite the fact that he hasn't had a win in the championship tour event here before. Well, and we know that just because of, uh, again, his style and approach and uh, what he does in, in you know, the size of wave and smaller trestles. Man, he, in powerless waves, he, he showcases power, plus uh, he, his innovation and progression second to none. Who's going to apply the pressure in the opening exchange, Pete? I don't know. They uh, both look kind of uh, easy going at this point, but I mean, it really, you don't really want to showcase what you're going you're gonna to do yet. Uh, I think that when you start to see a set move in the lineup, it's always nice to kind of watch how the paddling kind of unfolds because, again, non priority situation in the very beginning is going to be the surfer that's going to have that inside position. So you got to put yourself in that inside position, and that's the strategy. It starts when the wave kind of comes in because it's going to move, and you've got to kind of move with it and and also stay in the good position of of uh, inside position with your competitor so cool shortly we'll hear from Jordy Smith who's just breaking that heat down with his coach Chris, Chris Gallagher but I guess the, the thing that these two can't afford to do now is pace themselves oh, I think they got that opportunity in the quarterfinals I guess less fancy rivals uh, Felipe had Kanoa. Kanoa didn't switch on and put the pressure on him, so he was able to kind of cruise. Even though he threw down some big individual turns, I think he's capable of much more. Same story for John Florence. He just sort of moseyed his way through the quarters. Now, though, both surfers, they're going have to have to have their foot to the floor, as we see Kelly Slater, the most winning surfer ever here at the Hurley Pro, talking to another former winner in Luke Egan. Some legends right there, for sure. You know, there's that also that, you know, considering what today's conditions are allowing, is it it's even more so that you have to capitalize on those opportunities and, and you can't make mistakes. And so, you, you know, there's that balance of high risk to, uh, you know, getting the score um, and not making a mistake. Gosh, it's and that's the pressure that's involved there. Just in the the psych piece to this exchange. We had John Florence talking about this location and he was saying it allows a more of a progressive approach, a big air, a couple of big hacks. 
You know, those hacks are going to be limited somewhat today by the size of the waves. So those big airs are going to become even more important. I think the, the combination of both obviously always scores well. But this heat could turn into an air show. Let's hope it does. Finally, we got uh, some lines starting to make its way. It's so hard to see. Still gray skies uh, reflecting on the, the water, making it a little bit challenging. I mean, Keeley alluded to it. Striders in the water kind of saying the same thing, that it's still a bit of a challenge. That's why sometimes the wind kind of a little bit helps, because it gives some contrast. 23 minutes remaining in semifinal number two to decide our second finalist. Right now, we're going to hear from the man that's already made the jump into the final heat of the Hurley Pro for the third year in a row, Geordie Smith with Rosie Hodge. So consistent out at this break. Well, Geordie, pretty much in the first couple, first probably 30 seconds of this heat, you know, got that eight point right on your backhand. How important is it to capitalize on opportunities? Um, it's basically everything today. Um, really lucky that um, Ace kind of just was probably thinking just let's, let's get the ball rolling but the heat before there was a lot of waves so um, I thought we were going to have you know a bunch of opportunities but um, and then I got my eight and then I saw uh, I saw him on the inside and I just quickly jumped off got priority um, pretty much sat for the rest of the heat I think it was probably till like the five minutes left or so um, that I got my last wave and it's so glossy out there that it's really hard to see where you where you put your turns um, can make you kind of catch or slide out very easy like we saw in my first turn on the right. Well, Jordy, what I want to know from you is, is it more sp stressful needing a two or an eight? I mean, an excellent score or just a minor score? Because it just seems like a lot of pressure starts to build when there's only that little bit of time on the clock. I'd probably say the two, when it's inconsistent like this, is probably more. Because if you had to lose needing a two, it's very depressing. <laughs> but um, when you need an eight or so, you got your work cut out. You have to sit out there back and wait for a mob. It's pretty, pretty easy. But on a two, you really can get any way, but you just... Not, nothing was breaking, so um, yeah, that's you know they have, they both have their, their their bad sides to it. Well, Jordy, looking at this, you can potentially take out a second win for the season and really increase that lead. Is that factoring in for you at all? Absolutely. I mean, I wasn't here for a haircut, so <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely want to, want to uh, try and get a win for sure. Um, yeah, hopefully it, it, the wind actually comes up a little bit and gives a bit of texture on the on the water. You know, that'll make it easier to see. Thank you, Jordy, for your time. Good luck in the final. <laughs> Thanks, Rosie. Jordy Smith looking relaxed at the moment. We've seen him uh, to the top end of the, the ratings in the past, but, you know, has always kind of seemed to carry a, a bit of stress with that, that big goal in mind, but this year just looking so chilled. and Not a huge difference in what he was having. I mean, last year, obviously, he's ranked first compared to when he came into the event this time last year. He was fifth. The average heat score, very similar, 14.03 here, 14.06. His heat winning percentage this season, 61% compared to the last season when he came into here, 50%. So that, I think, is a, a big difference. Plus, he already had a win uh, this season. Didn't have any wins until he came here and won again. So The, the stats aside, though, uh, what do you think of, of Geordie's chances against these two? Because they have been putting up some bigger numbers than him throughout the contest. Uh, well, I mean, I, I'm going to... If, you know, either one of these guys of this heat goes into the final. I, I mean, I, for me, it's a, it's a toss up. I think whoever ends up being uh, on the best waves. And, and the reason why I feel like Jordy's in a restart, um, the, re the reason why I feel like Jordy's, um, you know, because you would say, for me, the advantage most likely would have gone to a Felipe or a John John just because of the dynamics that he carries. But right now, in those big moments, Jordy's answering, right? Those are those stress moments, those world championship moments, like, Barton had alluded to, he's been able to put it together. I mean, yesterday, prime example, needing a huge score, getting the opportunity, and putting it like a literally, it wasn't a question mark in my eyes after watching that wave be ridden by Jordan yesterday. He, he was slam dunked it. He literally just ripped the backboard down and claimed it and, and won that heat substantially. And those are those big moments that uh, he's been stepping up that we, you know, we see occasionally, but really good to see it this season. It's also been impressive uh, watching John respond to Geordie's big moments throughout this draw. We've seen it a couple of times. Anytime Geordie's kind of really stepped it up and dropped big numbers, like the third round where he had a heat score total of 18.94, John's responded really well. He had a 19.07 in that third round. And then in, in I think in the quarterfinals too, John Florence 
impressive again, Jordy, 17.76. John had to sleep on that result. You know, Jordy progressing <laughs> through to the semi-finals and had to come down this morning and get the win over Jeremy Flores. So, you know, as much as Jordy's been dealing with the pressure very well, John's also been coping fantastically uh, here at Trestles. Totally agree, and I think that that's part of the whole reason the drama that unfolds, right? You, there's always the drama of the heat that you have at hand, but you know the world title race and at this point of the year, you had alluded very early in this event, pressure is, uh, is going to be a, a theme throughout, and sure enough, it has. And the response to that pressure. And you can just feel those, those two really breaking away from the pack, I guess, Felipe. We'll be talking a lot about him if he can go on and get the win here in the semifinals, get a second victory. Here Here's that Trestles. situation that I was talking about. Who's going to kind of break away and who's going to set up? Well, yeah. Felipe kind of wanted the inside for the left, and he's going to get it. Driving up into this first bowl. Kind of a little horizontal in his approach to that first maneuver, but made up some points on the second turn in the pocket. Poking a bit of spray skyward. This wave starting to stand up through the inside. A smooth ride, a composed wave for Felipe. Doubt this one will go excellent, but a clean start. Well, we had a fresh clock, so it's really like a beginning of the heat. You know, it's the first three minutes of the heat. You can wash away that lull of 10 minutes. You know, now priority is established. Pretty much a one-wave set. And Felipe advantage by holding that inside position. You know, again, this wave kind of pushing off of the cobblestones, so it's not going to give him a ton of vertical face, but he did well with what he had given to him. You know, beautiful flow throughout this ride. You know, he wasn't having to double pump bottom turns. It was just straight top to bottom surfing, but just not a lot of lift. Let's see what Florence can do now. Using his priority on this one, nice looking wall. Plenty of zap in that first turn. Second turn, a little more risk. Recovers eventually to get to the end section. Tries to spin out, just pushing a little too hard maybe, but certainly uh, throwing down some more high risk turns. Definitely giving it a go for sure. You know, there's two those two little like errors. I mean, the going to the layback and having to stand back up after that turn, of course, pushing very hard, and that's that risk of going just a tinge too hard. Beautiful first snap here, though. I love that he, they both get the opportunity right out of the gates. Didn't have to sit too much, but that looseness, but controlled looseness. And then just this little error here. I mean, I would have liked to have seen him complete the ride because it will definitely affect the score. But I mean, the dynamics of those two maneuvers from John say that kind of won't match Felipe. Waiting on the numbers to come through now. So the judges having to set the scale. What will they reward? That smooth, mistake-free surfing with a little less risk from Felipe Toledo or John Florence. A couple of errors on his wave, but putting a little more into those turns. Come to find out in a very, very short moment. 25 and a half minutes to go. And it's been amazing to watch Felipe bounce back this season. Think about a world title run and surfers highlighting events where they've had previous, previous success or, or they have a great chance of winning. And Felipe really dropped the ball at stop number one on the Gold Coast. A round two exit there, but made up for it. And this is probably the thing that we should be talking about with Felipe. He collected his two best results this season in pretty solid conditions. His semi-final over in Margaret River and got that victory at Jeffreys Bay. So he's starting to get the, the results when the swirl is jacking and obviously getting good ones now uh, with the swirl being a little smaller as well. So getting more and more dangerous at every season. So true. I mean, I mean and you expect that, really. A uh, surfer that's this talented as Felipe is, and you know, it's only a matter of time before those, you know, those little you know, negative parts of his you know, campaign or those events are just going to turn around. I mean, I feel like it's only a matter of time because he's that talented. When you think about the, the big ones that we often talk about, the Pipe Masters, Fiji. He's quarter-final at those stops too, so he's starting to build now. A 6.5 on his first wave. He gets the jump on John Florence on the open exchange, but that's actually been the case in John's previous two heats too. His rival has gotten a better wave than him in the beginning, but he's responded well. 
Well, I think the judges have uh, laid claim that no mistakes. You gotta have clean, precise surfing. You know, bobbles or falls are gonna affect your score. Felipe going into the good range. John, not quite there. The nerves, Pete. We always talk about the competitors and what they might be feeling. World title pressure. Felipe can't afford to have any mistakes. Do you start to feel it? Do you start to feel their uh, anxiety? Oh, for sure. You know, and, and you know, this is our job sitting here in the booth is is to to get in their shoes, get in their head. Of course, I'm going to feel the anxiety, the drama that unfolds. The six coffees isn't helping either. Uh, no, it's not. But. But it is so quiet out there at the moment. Kind of eerie. 23 minutes to go. John Florence in second spot and he's a 1.68. What you want to see in these situations is the surfers getting equal opportunity. Each of them's had a wave at the moment. You'd have to say that it's pretty fair at this stage. Felipe just edging ahead of John John. That slight advantage, of course, of having priority. You know, in the very beginning of the heat, that's that cat and mouse of who is going to put themselves in position. Felipe was able to do that, and that is an advantage. There's little teeny battles that happen within the 30 minutes. And right now, capitalization has to happen for Felipe with that priority. He's got to choose the right wave. It's amazing how the ocean will dictate a lot of that. You know, we saw it earlier where you know uh, you can pick up a wave outside of priority, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, and look at that wave, you have priority, and you have a certain wave in mind. You make the decision to let it go by, and then your competitor picks up a pretty good score. You're like, oh, be frustrated. Sometimes a, a matchup seems so uneven that the surfer on the bottom side of that has to have a, a really strong game plan to get the jump over over someone who's actually, you know, just more talented once they get to their feet. But in a matchup like this where it's so even. That strategy is maybe even more important. But the surfing is definitely going to uh, play an even more vital role. Which is then being careful of where you, how much you put into it. You know, I think that John on that first wave, he, he wanted to perform at a very, very high level and pushed, pushed hard. And that was the, the little error there. And, and then the finish too, where again, he's trying to put too much on that final maneuver. You know, he completes that final maneuver uh, for John, you know, and, and you know, did a little tail slide or it gets the little air reverse. I mean, then we're looking at pretty darn close scores, pretty even. Put yourself in Ross Williams' shoes. What, what would be uh, your advice to John Florence going out there to get the jump on Felipe? Ah, uh, well, um, well, do what you're doing. I mean, I think that you're gonna, you don't, you don't, he's done so well. He's, he's been producing solid scores. He's responded. He's come from behind. He's done all the right things. So more of the same. You know, I don't think you would give too much information to him. You know, it's not like you want to change anything. Uh, you just want to, you know, you want to instill the confidence and, you know, a little pat on the back and have fun. Well, 20 and a half minutes to go here. The boys trying to have fun at the moment, but getting very few opportunities to do so. Felipe's got priority. He also banked a bigger score than John in the opening exchange, a 6.5. This is a decent sized set wave. John forcing Felipe to make a decision here. He's having a look at it. Felipe's opting to go left. He's going to drive up into the bowl. Almost gets his board vertical on that first move. Might need something big through the inside here. A couple of big snaps, changing up his direction into the bowl of the wave a couple of times and just whips his board up vertically to finish that one off. Seems to me that Felipe's made a conscious decision to, to look at these lefts as an opportunity, feeling like they're going to have a little bit more vertical face. And again, no mistakes for Felipe on that wave. So another pretty good score is going to post here. Not a, not probably going to go excellent again, but definitely matching his previous wave see this wave moving off the reef once again. So you can see it's bending out to sea, but it's going to come back at some point, which it does. That middle section there, I think he was given quite a bonus because it did almost go fairly vertical. And again, this is part of here, just the rhythm he's carrying. He's not doing too much. And uh, posting now, he's giving himself with his last 19 minutes the opportunity to go a bit bigger. 
whereas the pressure for John, having not really produced a solid score yet, is going to be that much more. I guess the the real bonus, the real advantage for Felipe is these sets aren't coming through in twos. So John's not getting an opportunity to respond and maybe kick out before Felipe get back out there and, and get priority. So he's having to sit and have a good think about these numbers too after Felipe rides these ways. We're waiting on a score to drop. We'll find out what the situation is here in semi-final two in just a moment. Not just me, but everyone on tour got to go big against John if you want to beat him. Hoping we can have a really good heat and uh, just try some big airs. <laughs> Welcome back to the Hurley Pro semi-final number two unfolding out there in the lineup. Here's a look at the schedule as you can see, seven different winners from the first seven events. But that's going to change here at the Hurley Pro Trestles because Geordie Smith already into the final. And uh, on the bottom half in this second semi, we've got John Florence, who was victorious at Margaret River, and Felipe Toledo, who took out J Bay in the lineup. So far in this heat, Felipe. He surfed his wave smart but he hasn't been opportunistic. And as a result, he's somewhat left the door open for John, who hasn't done better than a 4.83 at this stage. Felipe's previous ride, a 7.23. John needs an 8.9 to turn the heat. Well, I feel like, you know, with 16 minutes, it's, it's not about the 8.9. It, it, it's really about two waves. You would figure that Felipe's gonna get another opportunity here. He already, again, uh, you know, increased his lead with that last left so it's going to take two waves definitely feels like we're going to see felipe do something a little more special on his next ride i think there'll be some definite risk in it his first two waves were really safe but with you know such big lulls and only single wave sets rolling in he wanted to get to the end of his rides clean surfing uh, just as much spark as we've seen from him as far as speed in his transitions but safer turns and it's still dynamic, right? I mean, that's what I think that Felipe makes him again so dangerous. Even his quote unquote conservative surfing is still exceptionally better than a lot of the competitors. So he's surfing a very, very smart tactical heat, seeing that maybe those opportunities on those lefts were something to look at. And he's done that. You know, now 13.73, he's done just on lefts. Big crowd starting to build down here at Lower Trestles. It's not a, an easy venue to get to really either, uh, but always attracts a, a really healthy crowd. Everyone anticipating a, a big showdown for the final. And really the experienced competitors in the draw, the guys that spend the most uh, time in the lineup out here uh, have come to the fore once again. John Florence putting in a lot of time before the event kicked off, but Felipe and Jordy maybe uh, spend as much time in the lineup as anyone, you know, Chloe and Dino included. Well, you live in, live in the, the community. This is by far probably the funnest and uh, most surf wave in San Clemente. We're getting pretty excited about this matchup for the final and the Swatch Pro. You know, two surfers who've had a, a really rough go at, go at it the past couple of seasons. Keely Andrew getting into her first final. Silvana Lima, she's obviously collected a, a few CT wins before, but it's been a long time since she's found herself in the, the final heat at, at the championship to a level. And so you can see a very excited winner, <laughs> whoever wins out of it on the Swatch Pro side. I mean, it's an amazing opportunity for Keely Andrew to establish herself. Very similar to what we saw, Sage. All of a sudden, you, there's that belief that you can be a winner. And it's a transitional. Usually, when you see those first-time winners, all of a sudden, things start to really open up, and the confidence is there. And 
that's cool. We're seeing it more and more on the women's side. 13 minutes remaining here for John Florence to get himself an 8.9. Much like Geordie Smith in the last heat. Very patient. He wants to get a, a quality set before pulling the trigger here. The, the difference, Geordie dropped an 8 on his first wave. John just had a 4.83. Here we go, a, a tough decision for Florence. Doesn't look like he's going to have a look at this one. Just a medium-sized ride. This is where Felipe could be deadly because he's got a couple of decent scores. We're expecting him to throw some more fireworks out of some of this ride, but the wave just doesn't stand up quite enough. Uh, some nerves here for John. He's, he knows there's a certain wave he's looking for. Will Lower's lineup produce it? Twelve minutes to go here. <laughs> he still he passed up another one. Pretty small. He's yeah. uh, he's really invested in, in a, a set here. He sees the the next opportunity to drop an excellent number. There hasn't been one in this heat just yet. So we'll see what unfolds. Uh, he'd be telling himself that it's about getting 16 points here, no matter what. Let's see how things are, are going in the John John Florence camp. Strider Wozolewski is on hand with Ross Williams, Brendan Wasserman. Yeah, down here, just uh, kind of poked the head into the the camp there and, and checked in with Ross and checked in with what's happening and, you know, really just trying to identify the right wave or something with a wall, a medium to a large set with enough wall on it to do some work. A lot of these waves coming in soft and not giving the opportunity that they're looking for for those high impact maneuvers and that's exactly the way that he's looking for. So he's sitting, waiting, trying to find that wave as this thing winds down. There's not a whole lot of them coming through. You see some waves, but they're a little soft and we'll see if Felipe Toledo takes this one. Here he goes, standing on the tail, loading up for something big. Has a good section to work with and hacks into it and spins his board into reverse. And we knew that he was going to add a bit of flair to try and drop the 6.5 and leave John chasing a, a nine, maybe even chasing a two-way total. Wow. You know, and that's, again, we've said it time and time again that his surfing on mid-sized waves is incredible. And he just showcased that. How quick was that? Just zapify into it. Full rotations, combination of major moves, tick there. Completes his ride all the way. And uh, you'd have to say that type of surfing on even a small wave is going to fetch much better than the 6.5. Probably the best wave of the heat. I mean, look at that. No grab, just all he's around. Rotates so clean, too. And there again, that footwork where he's able to get back. Literally doing a bottom turn from the middle of his board. And he'll actually shift his feet mid bottom turn up into the you know the the maneuver and uh, wow I mean I'm starting to see some scores drop here may not even go to his top two surely that has to go into his top two it's the only, <laughs> only time he's really thrown any risk into his surfing in this heat Let's see so waiting on the number to come through will John Florence be chasing more than an 8.9 going into the final stages here. Just under nine minutes to go. Under nine and a half minutes to go. And it doesn't look like this one will go into Felipe's top two, which is a surprise to me, but that's just my opinion. Yeah, see. Um, still waiting on one more score to drop. I said it was going to be the best wave of the heat, didn't I? <laughs> and uh, I'm wrong. A 6.1. Let's see what Felipe's reaction is. I saw his reaction just there. He seemed a little surprised. Just under nine minutes to go. Well, they just had they had just read it out. Well, uh, you can't let that affect you. You know, I mean, yeah, obviously he did put way more risk into that wave. It was definitely a smaller wave. I get that part. But, you know, duh. Eight minutes for hey. Eight and a half minutes to go. Let's dive into the recap and we'll see if there was anything more on these left-handers. You can see the waves are a little bit bigger, Pete. Felipe, though. Oh, he looked spot on. I mean, he did carry a lot more maneuvers. Good, complete ride again, carrying so much speed in and out of those maneuvers. Beautiful start to his seat. There, a 6.5 there. This is John's 4.83. 
A bit more risky in those moves, of course. Had to get the fall here. Which cost him, definitely. Attacking the lip off that first maneuver there. As this wave flattens out, but he stays with it. And then this wave steepens up for him. And this was the best wave of the heat, a 7.23. Yeah, you can see it. what the judges are thinking there on those taller walls, just getting tighter in the pocket. But for me, there was just that, I don't know, an extra spark. It was electrifying that other ride, even though it was on a smaller wave. It was just more fun to watch. Sure. Back in you. Seven and a half minutes to go now. And the situation remains the same for John John Florence. He's got priority. Judges leaving some uh, room for something extra special from the reigning world champion as Keely Andrew gets set to take on Silvana Lima in her first ever final. Let's dive into the vibe on the beach with Strider Wozalewski. What's going on down there, Strides? Well, we're just down on the beach. There's plenty of people down here enjoying this action. Actually, you know, it's pretty interesting. You know? Think about the drama that gets built at the end of a heat. Well, John John, we saw what he was able to do in the last five minutes of his heat against B. Dervish. So, you know, if the, if the ocean wakes up, he's definitely waiting for that one wave. You know, it's got to have that wraparound face on it, something that looks like it's coming at him for those high impact moves, and that's exactly what he's waiting for. That said, there's not a lot of it coming through, and the ball has not got going for him yet, so it's going to be hard for him to turn this thing around. We've seen Felipe get a couple of great waves, really high impact surfing on waves that John John could have had. So, interesting note to see that John's actually passed up a couple opportunities in this heat. He's gone all in, hasn't he? He's uh really banking hard now on just that single ride to turn this heat by the looks of things felipe meanwhile five rides keep him busy his last wave a 6.1 didn't go into his top two but it, it gave the, him the opportunity to find some confidence pete and going for some high risk turns and if he gets a medium-sized wave he could definitely now. drop an excellent number on us at this point when you look at time wise you know, you start thinking about one, one wave. And John, full well and capable of uh, posting that big number needed. Of course, uh, does take kind of a, a more special wave. Five and a half minutes to go, waiting on a set wave to come John's way. I really hope we see it, because uh, you know, the ocean's been good to him throughout this contest. It's given equal opportunity to competitors. Now, we're going to have a deserving winner here no matter what unfolds because the three competitors remaining in the draw have done the hard work, have surfed those tough battles and given us some highlight moments to reflect well, Ronnie, on. Maybe the opportunity here. I mean, there's a little darker lines heading in. Doesn't look like much on the screen, but that second wave might, might be a real set. Well, this is a high-pressure moment for John Florence. He's got time for two more waves. But the consistency is questionable at the moment, so he might have to turn the heat with this one ride. He's taking his position here pretty deep. He's going to be racing. He's going to have a lot of speed for this first section. A little caught behind oh, at the moment. Yeah. He's going to go down. And that is a massive bonus for Felipe, who's already established the lead. Doesn't even need to look at this next wave. He'll want to maintain control on the takeoff zone. Re reflecting on this heat, you know, you know, it's hard to pick a mistake from John Florence other than getting caught behind on that wave, but he had to be patient once he got priority. No, absolutely, and that's that old age-old thing of, uh, you know, when you have priority or actually you sit with priority, that's the, the time when you have to pick the right wave. Have a look at this, Pete. Something else rolling our way, and it looks like it's coming in twos. So maybe John will get a chance here to sell Felipe on a wave. We'll see. Three minutes, 40 seconds to go. Florence, he's having a look at this one. He's swinging. Felipe's going to go, though, trying to get rid of a 6.5. And he went pretty hard on his last wave, so he's got to do something special. Strong first turn, ditches the fins on the second move, mixing it up nicely. Going to a layback. Pretty explosive stuff here from the Brazilian. As he looks to shut this one down, he kicks out on the inside. John Florence up on the left. 
and he is finding some nice wall to work with. A couple of big turns there in sequence and gets a good finish too. So a great exchange and this will get John back in it with just on three minutes to go. It is going to get him for sure back in it. He had the innovation and flair there. He knows how important it is right now. He's on the left, so much better advantage for him to get back out in the lineup. As you can see the replay here, this left, you got to throw the comparisons, right? What we've seen on Felipe's lefts, this much more dynamic. Two beautiful turns and that, and a finish, and now he's going to get back out. Felipe probably will improve his situation as well. He'll uh, improve on that 6-5, so there's going to be another wave needed by John Florence. But look at this surfing here. Again, on the rights, softer, but he is giving 110%. I wouldn't say this is going to go into a huge score, but I feel like it's going to better at least one of those scores there, the 6-5 or the 7-2. I just love the way Felipe surfs. You know, he's able to draw out his bottom turns, but the way he whips his body and rotates through his turns, he gathers speed without having to, to weave down the line. You know, in transition, he really whips that board around. I think it's going to be a pretty solid number. This combination of three pretty solid turns on the outside. For Toledo, but John Florence also lighting up that left-hander. So a great exchange here with just a minute and a half to go. I think John might ne still need another wave. Yeah, he will. But uh, look at the clock, 1.30. And is there another set? Waiting on the numbers to come through. John will want to get the update now. He's having a look at a wave, though. Just over a minute to go. Is he going to swing into this thing? I would. No, maybe not. He lets it roll through. Felipe had a bit of a look. Florence about to put up a solid score. But Felipe, we're seeing some big numbers for him too, Pete. Well, if, uh, one minute, he's asking for the situation, of course. Really comparable scores. John on the back end showing some risk, adding some flair, comboing up some big moves. A 7.83, the highest scoring ride of this semi-final so far. Felipe, though, a 7.67. He increases his heat score total. And Florence needs a 7.07 .07 with only 30 seconds remaining. And looking out to see, as you can see, not much there. Well, at least we got the opportunities at the end, that's for sure. Made it exciting. Well, that one wave that John had where he got caught behind, he waited a long time for it. You know, you reflect back on Geordie's performance in the semifinals. When he got that opportunity, he was well positioned. He got out in front and let go of some decent turns. But uh, John Florence knocked out of the event here. Felipe Toledo and Jordy Smith will battle it out in the final of the Hurley Pro. One of them will take a second victory, but Jordy Smith's going to be extending his lead on the Jeep leaderboard. Do you like that? Well, if so, Subscribe over there and then watch more videos over there. And then tell us your favorite videos down there. It's a three-step process. Do them all now.